In this video, I want to show you how you can create a progress bar that looks something like this in Power BI, where it shows you a, um, a progress to a certain target that shows you those values. And it lets you change and is controllable by a filter that looks something like this. And all of this natively using the simple line charts in Power BI. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So progress bars are good visualizations to show your progress against a specific target that you might have. Now there is a native gauge visual that you can use to visualize something like this quite easily without any customization at all. However, you might be in a position where you might be looking for something of an alternative without having to use any custom visuals. So today we're going to go through how you can do this simply using just the simple line charts in Power BI. So let's start with the data model, first of all, which is just the typical Northwind data sets that we always use. I've created a few different things here already, like the calculation for our sales, which is just the simple SUMX calculating the sales by multiplying the unit price and quantity. Um, and what, we, what I've done here is I've added those sales in this list of all of the different categories summarized. So we have all of those sales grouped up by category. Um, and then I've also created two measures, which is our target, which is static across all of our different categories, but um, that can also be different. For this demo, we're just gonna keep them the same, as well as the max value, which is what we want to be the full length of our progress bar. And I've also added a filter visual here that lets you select a specific category, and then it just sort of focuses on that specific category. And now what we want is to convert this table into a simple progress bar. Now, first I wanna show you how to create it easily using a gauge, because that might fulfill your requirements. And then we're going to go through how you can create this custom progress bar. So the first thing that we're going to do, I'm just going to make some space for it, is to create a copy of this table. And then I'm going to convert it into a gauge. And here we go. Let's just have a look and make sure that they are in the right areas. So the target needs to be in the target value. And there you go, pretty much. So you have your progress. What is the category? sales progress so far, the maximum value is 200,000. And the target that we're aiming for is 150,000. So from there, you will see that as I make a selection to this category, the value of this progress bar changes. So this might satisfy your requirement, in which case, congratulations. However, if you want to show this in a more kind of in a, not a gauge format, but la rather as a kind of progress bar, you can do that too, but it's just a little bit more finicky. So let's go through the process step by step. So in order to show the progress bar into a bar, we need to first create and construct the axis. And the axis is simply just a table that will just go from zero to the very end to the maximum that we have that we want to show. So for this one, we're going to just insert a new DAX table here. We're going to name this one progress bar. And then we're going to generate a series that starts from zero to 100, incrementing by one. So what it will do if I just preview that is it just generates this value that goes from zero to 100 like this. Maybe we'll just start it from one so that it's 100% because the percentage is how we will show the value into this progress bar. The next thing that we want to define is which part of that line chart or what level it will be in this line chart. So we just need to create like a static measure for here. So for this one, we're going to say um, static and I'm just going to say one for now. And what I'm going to do just to preview how this looks like, I'm going to drag the value here changes into a line chart. And then we will add as part of its x axis is the value and the y axis is the static. So now we have this zero to 100 axis that we've created and the one is the elevation for that line chart. We just want to make sure that 
all of the values that we do are in this one and everything else we will have to deal with later. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to put another line on top of this line because at the moment it goes from zero to 100, but we want to have a line that shows the progress of the sales against the, the target that we have, which is 200,000. So what we need to do is to convert that into a hundred percent scale and then put that as a separate line on top of our line chart. So that way we can distinguish between what is the background, which is this gray part, and then what is the progress bar, which is this blue part right here. So what we're going to do, so we're going to click a new measure, and then I'm just going to name this one progress. And we're going to create just one variable. I'm just going to call it two percentage like this. And then I'm going to create an if here to say if the sales is less than maximum. So if the sales bar doesn't exceed the maximum, we want to do our calculation. Otherwise, we want to just set it to 100. So 100 just means that irregardless if the value goes above 100, just set it to 100 because it would have exceeded the maximum value that we've set for it. First, let's just divide the sales by the max. This will let us get its value in percentage format. We multiply it by 100 so that we can convert this into like a whole number value. And then we're going to we're going to wrap it with a round because there will be decimals in that value. So we just want to make sure that there are no decimals so that we can map it in this progress bar that we have created because it's just whole number values. So what it will do here, so now that we, this variable gets the percentage value of our progress, we're going to use return. And then we're going to do another if statement to say, if the value in the progress bar is less than or equals to the percentage, then put it in one. Otherwise, leave it blank. So we'll just keep it empty for now. I will just keep it empty just because it will be blank if it's false. So what it says here is that if it's as long as it's less than or equals to the progress, keep it, put a value on it in this one. Otherwise, keep it blank. That will make sure now that if we add this progress into the axis here. So if we have under static here, we're going to add the progress, you'll see that now that progress gives us the progress. It has a value on anything that is less than or equals to the progress that we have. So that gives that highlighting color. Now, this might be a little bit confusing. So I'm just going to format this a little bit first before I try to explain what's going on. So I'm going to just remove a few things here, like the titles, legends, and then we're just going to keep the line chart like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste it and then put it in a table like this so that you can visualize how basically what we're trying to do. So we have three values at the moment in here. So we have the one to 100, which is what we have generated earlier. The static, the light blue, which is in the one elevation. So it is there's just one on all of those cells. And then in the progress where we've just created that logic, it's saying that if the progress is at a certain percentage, less than or equals to give me one, otherwise keep it blank. So it's saying that we are 71% away from the maximum. So that's what is being colored here with the dark blue. So I hope that little explanation made sense to you. If not, it's okay. We're going to keep continuing because I'm sure it will make sense to you at some point. So for now, we're going to add a few more things here. And like, for example, we're going to add a target visual. We're going to create a new measure here. I'm going to name it target visual like this. And then I'm going to create an if statement. So similar to before, if the max of progress bar value is equals to 75, because 75% at the moment is the, the target value, then we will add one. So what we're going to do here is going to put the target visual. So you will see now it adds this orange thing, which is basically where the target value should be, which is the 150,000. And if I show that here in our table, you will see the difference. So now instead of using a less than or equals to in our 
measure. We just say if the progress bar, bar value is equals to 75, it is equals to 75, then it's one. So that's why there's only one point there, which is the orange thing. There are just two more DAX functions that we need to set up and then we're done with DAX for today. These are going to be the position of our labels. So because we want to show the progress label as well as the target label in our progress bar. So we're going to start by um, working on the progress label first. And we don't really need to worry so much about the how it's being shown. It's more where they should be that needs to be sort of calculated. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to copy this part of the progress measure and then paste it here because we're going to use the same logic. The only difference is that we're going to change it into equals and then we're going to change the position of this label to 0 minus 0 0.5. And you're going to understand why I'm doing that in a second. Well, actually, I'm just going to put it here. You see that the negative 0.5 puts that label in a different elevation. We're going to touch on that again later. For now, I'm going to just continue. Just create the target uh, position for the target label. Target label. And then for this one, we're going to do 2.5. Now, if we put that there, you will see that it's now putting that position in. So as you make changes to the or, or select different categories here, you'll see that these values change, but they don't quite look like progress bars yet. So we can start formatting them and kind of visualize how it should look like and it should look like a progress bar. So let's start with a few things here. So let me just click on this and then let's change a few various things here. So under the lines, we want to just make sure that the, the labels well, first of all, let's just, I just want to make sure that they are in the right order here. Static progress visual, because you want to make sure the progress and the target, uh, the targets above the progress so that you can always see it. Then under the lines, we want to change the stroke of these to zero, because that's not what we want to use to visualize them. The labels, we want to change them to the same color as the background, because we don't really want to see them. Then under the data labels, well, let's go to the data labels later. Let's just go to the error bars, which is how we're going to visualize these values. And what we're going to do from here is we're going to just simply enable them one by one. So let's start with the static value, enable it and change it by percentage, change the upper bound and lower bound to 100 so that it fills the bar that we want. Then on the bar itself, we want to change the color to be gray, right? The width to be 10, marker shape to be none, and border size to be zero. So that fills in that bar chart, the bottom part, which is the not so filled in part, similar to this, this visual. And then the next thing is we're just going to go through this one by one. So we're going to go to the progress one, change it to percentage, change the values to be 100. The bar color, we want it to be, well, let's just make it similar to this one, right? So we just make it blue. Marker shape to none, width as 10, border size is zero, and there we go. So we have this kind of almost looking like a progress bar now. Let's go through the rest and see if we can finish it. So target visual, enable by percentage, zero, 100. And the bar color, maybe we want this to be red like this, width to be 10, shape is none, border size is zero. And for this one, because you can see the color, we can just change that line for the target visual to be the same color. And there we go. And you will see that we are kind of pretty much almost done. So you can see that, yeah, so you're, you're seeing the progress bar against the target, which is pretty much yeah almost done the only other few things that we need to change and add are the data labels themselves because you might want to see the the values of the target and the value of the current progress so for that we're going to enable data labels but we're going to disable it on everything else apart from the labels the progress and target labels so we're going to disable go through each one of these disable and then on the progress label what we want to do 
is under values, you have this option to add a custom label. And for this one, we're just going to keep it simple. We're going to create, what is this one? Is this progress or let me just check. Yeah. So this is progress label. Yeah. So, okay. And never mind. So progress label. We're going to go custom label and add the progress value here. So it will just give you the value of the progress that so maybe not the progress, but the sales, because that's that might be what you want to show. We'll make it bold and we'll make it the same color as the progress bar so that you know exactly what it is. But you can change it to different value if you want. And one of the reasons why we change the elevation is so that you can see these values outside of the bars that you've just created. So from here, because it's at the bottom, you can change the position to always be showing underneath. So now you can see the total sales value down there. And obviously, as you change that, it makes sure that it's, it's always outside of the progress bar. So pretty simple, right? So let's do the last thing now, which is just to adjust the target label here. We're going to adjust this one to be above. And that's why we changed the elevation of that axis. Turn on custom label. And for this one, we're just going to use the target value. We're going to make it bold. And then we're going to make the same color as the target. But obviously, because now you have this custom label, you can add whatever you want there if you wanted to. And that's pretty much it. So as you can see from here, you have two different options that you can use to show your progress, either with the gauge or with this custom bar chart, a uh, line chart rather. And as you can see, as you change the category, it will change those values and show you if it surpassed the target or if it's under below the target. As you can see from here, because it surpassed that 200,000, it's just showing us 100% completed throughout this. I mean, it's showing us the value 251,000 in our kind of current sales. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to create something like this, like a progress chart in Power BI without using any custom visuals at all. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you liked this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.